Hello, and thank you for joining us for another inspiring message from Journey Church. To learn more about our ministries, please visit us online at journeychurch.org. Now here is today's message. Father, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that the Son may give glory to you. For you gave him authority over all people, so that he might give eternal life to all those you gave him. And eternal life means to know you, the only true God, and to know Jesus Christ, whom you sent. I have shown your glory on earth. I have finished the work you gave me to do. Father, give me glory in your presence now, the same glory I had with you before the world was made. I have made you known to those you gave me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me. They have obeyed your word, and now they know that everything you gave me comes from you. I gave them the message that you gave me, and they received it. They know that it is true that I came from you, and they believe that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those you gave me, for they belong to you. Amen. How many of you guys belong to Jesus tonight? It is, uh, it's good to be here tonight with you. My name is Brian Lammer. I'm one of the pastors here. And uh, welcome to Saturday night here at Journey Church here in Jacksonville. We have people watching all around the world tonight. Can we welcome them all on our iCampus today? Thank you so much for being a part of what God is doing here. Rob and we are praying for Rob who we know is very sick, got kidney and heart problems. We're going to be lifting him up in our services tonight as a family. We'll be uh, praying for him, and uh, we just appreciate you joining with us tonight. Guys, we're finishing up the Gospel of John tonight. Um, it's a little up close and personal, so if you're in this few front seats, you are in a splash zone. And um, so I just uh, want you guys to get ready with a shield if you need it, uh, just because uh, I, I like to spit when I preach. And so we're going to try to to do a little bit of that tonight. And we're really excited. Pastor Eric and Mary Jo are traveling back from Mount Dora, Orlando area uh, today, and they will be back with us tomorrow. So we want to pray and keep our pastors uh, lifted up and you know, God is doing amazing things. How many of you guys know that tonight? God is doing amazing things. Uh, we have seen people come, walk forward, give hearts to the Lord during this series. God is up to something huge. Uh, he's birthing new things. We're seeing lives change. And how many of you guys know it's in spite of all of us? Amen. Amen. So tonight we're going to dig deep. We're just going to talk about uh, a part of the message that, uh, that we have read time and time again, and I know that we have. So if you would, turn in your Bibles with me to John chapter 6. It's a very familiar story that we're going to be looking at tonight. And while you're turning to John chapter 6, let me just share with you briefly, uh, before we jump into the Word, a couple of things that are very important that we need to talk about tonight. Number one is this. Next, this coming Wednesday night is our Access Prayer and Worship Service. If you've never been to an Access Prayer and Worship Service, it is one of the most unique services that we do here at Journey. It's all worship. It is all prayer. It is geared toward people coming in and literally being intercessors to come in. What is an intercessor, Brian? It's someone that prays. And so what we want is you to come and we're going to have several topics that we're going to be talking about. We're going to be praying over the school systems and various things as kids get ready to go back to school. So we'd love for you to be here Saturday, uh, Wednesday night, 7 p.m. This is the place to be. The reason, the second reason this is a place to be is if you're bringing backpacks in and you're a part of the back to school outreach, we're trying to gather up over 400 backpacks to go and give out to people that are in need here and to uh, other schools that are in our area. If you have a backpack and you forgot it, Wednesday night is the deadline. So if you want to bring it in, what we're going to do is following access prayer and worship, we have a, a, a kind of an assembly line in the back that we're going to be setting up and then people are going to be stuffing backpacks and getting 400 bags ready. We thank with about 50 people or more, we could have those backpacks stuffed and ready to go to, into our community within about 10 or 15 minutes. So it's not going to be a big deal, but it's a big deal for you to come and to bring one with you. We want to touch this uh, community and we want God to shine through the gifts that we're going to give them as well. A couple more things. We've got so much going on this at the end of the summer. The, we have a vision casting meeting for groups. It's August 7th, immediately following Sunday morning second service. Everybody say August 7th. I need to be there. 
Oh, there wasn't as many people that said that. But listen, here's the deal. We would love to feed you. We would love for you to come and hear the heart, the vision, the reason that we do groups. We know that groups is where real life happens. And so if you really believe that and you want to learn about groups, maybe you are wanting to step out in faith and actually do a group, we would love for you to be there August 7th. Pastor Donald is going to be uh, there casting vision for what we are believing are going to be uh, a set of groups this fall that are going to touch and change lives forever. Last thing is this, water baptism. How many guys have been under the waters of baptism? Anybody in here? Okay. Um, if you have not, if you have not, we've got a party for you. We have a picnic at the end of the, the month. It's actually August 15th, I believe, is the date, or 14th, August 14th. And what we're asking is, is that everyone bring a side dish. Journey's going all out. We're going to have dogs and burgers, and we're going to be barbecuing out. The kids and everybody can swim, but we're going to do a water baptism. It's the, actually one of the highlight events of the year. We baptized over 40 people last year, and it was an amazing event. We want you to be encouraged. Your children are going to hear about it. You're going to know about it. So water baptism, August 14th. It's in Spring Park, Green Cove Springs, and enough with the announcements. So, uh, June 6, uh, John chapter 6. <laughs> I'm in calendar mode now, guys. Let's, let's stop for a moment and let's, let's, let's bring it in. Here we go. So tonight, John chapter 6, the story that we're going to be reading is very familiar. And what, what I want to ask you to do, one of the reasons I'm here tonight is because I know we've got young people in here. We want to try to connect with them tonight in this, in this family service, but also because I don't want you to tune out. I may have to come grab a couple of you guys like this and wake you up because, listen, here's the deal. We're, we're going to be talking tonight about something that we've read time and time again. In fact, we've read this story. It's, it's in all four Gospels. And the reason that it's in all four Gospels is because I believe that it's super important that we get it, that we understand it, that Jesus would come and that he would speak to our hearts through the power of the Holy Spirit at work in this place. And so we're going to read the story of how Jesus begins to pray to the Father and he breaks the fish and the loaves that the young boy gave him. Very familiar story. We've heard about it in Sunday school. We've, if you've grown up in church for at any length, you've heard this story before. But I believe tonight God wants to open up our hearts. He wants to show us what this is really all about and how this really relates to us. How does the breaking of the fish and these loaves relate to the people of Journey Church? We need to know that. We need to know what God is speaking in this new season of life for us as a people. And so we're going to learn about that tonight. Kids, are you with me? Ever all the kids say, yeah. yeah. Are all the kids at heart say, yeah. yeah. We're here tonight. We're going to look at this together. So in John chapter 6, starting with verse 1, this is what the Bible says. You can follow along with us in your Bible or go to uversion.com for all of our notes. After this, Jesus went away to the other side, the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they had seen the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain and he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover of the Feast of the Jews was at hand, lifting up his eyes, then, and seeing the large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? Now how many of you guys know, we're going to stop there, how many of you guys know that Jesus knows the answer for that? He, 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 okay, this is not something where Jesus is guessing and he's really talking to Philip going, how are we going to get the bread? So Jesus is just questioning and he's trying to draw something very unique out of the disciples. Verse 6, he said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii would not be enough to buy bread for each of them to give a little. Now, the denarii was, is worth one day's wage. So think of your daily wage that you have today. A denarii is worth one full day's worth of work. They're saying that this, large, this crowd is so large that 200 denarii could not feed all of this multitude of people that were there. And he says, one of the disciples, verse 8, one of the disciples, Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? And Jesus said, have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so that the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus then took the loaves and 
When he had given thanks, he distributed them to those that were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told the disciples, gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, filled 12 baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten them. When the people saw the sign they, he had done, they said, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the gospel of John. We thank you for these words that were illuminated in John's heart by the power of your Holy Spirit. I thank you, God, that these words that we read tonight are breathed by you. And so, Lord, we know that they bring life. Lord, as we're here tonight, I thank you so much, Lord, that you're stirring in every heart. Father, I pray that every eye would be open, that every heart would be open to receive all that you have to give us tonight. Father, I pray that this story that we've read time and time again, Lord, that you would bring us great deep revelation of what you desire us to take away. Lord, we know it will be different from every person here because you are a personal God. But tonight we need you. Holy Spirit, breathe on us something fresh and something new. Know us tonight in this place that we may know you in this place. We ask it in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. amen. So we see Jesus here and he's, and he's feeding a large group of people. Now, many scholars say that, that though it says 5,000 men, we know that women and children were there because we know that 200 denarii would actually have fed 5,000 men. We know that there were women and children and most likely this crowd was about 20,000 people. This massive crowd is here because they're here to see Jesus. They're here to see the miracle working power of God who is, who is here in the flesh. And they don't know all that's going on, but they know that something is happening. They're seeing Jesus come in and he's, seeing, he's on the scene and he's doing these miracles and he's coming in and now these people are beginning to gather around him because they're seeing supernatural things at work. That's what happens. We chase after Jesus oftentimes because we see supernatural things happening. We must chase after God. So what is the purpose of this particular miracle? Again, this miracle is the only miracle that is recorded in the Gospel of John and the three synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So it is the only miracle of Jesus that is recorded in all four. So it's very, very important that we get it. So what is the purpose behind it? Number one is this, that... It's that Jesus could demonstrate his creative power being the Christ, the son of the living God. We talked about this in week one, that, that Jesus is God in the flesh, and he is his creative activing, and he, he, is, he is his active work of God. In the, trini in the triune God, Jesus is the one that is the creator. He comes in and he speaks things. And so Jesus is here and he takes these bread and fish and he begins to create things. And so it shows that Jesus is the Christ. He is the one that can create all things. The second thing is this, is it demonstrates the, the deity or the divine nature of God. It shows that it's not just some man here but this is God in the flesh able to do great and mighty works among them. You know, Jesus was crucified not because he, he came and he did great miracles. It was because time and time again, Jesus proclaimed that I am. I am God. That is why they crucified Jesus. Because he declared himself to be God. And so in this miracle, we see the wonders of God being unfolded in front of the people. And it's an amazing feat. How many of you guys know when, when you see something just begin to multiply and to multiply and to multiply, something's at work. Either you are on something seriously heavy or somebody, like the power of the Holy Spirit, is at work in that place. So Jesus is there and we see the divinity of God. We see that his life is wrapped up and he is God in the flesh. 